everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. We're glad you could be with us. We believe that we have some things today. It's sort of like a Bible study that we're doing. It is. We, we started this like a week ago where we were talking about you can receive the promises of God. Absolutely. And I, I don't remember exactly what the title was, but this is like part two. And so anyway, it's such an encouragement to, to just go through the scriptures and see what the Bible really says is available to us as believers. Like, see, the, here's the thing about it. You got born again. Yeah. I got born again in August of 1958. That's right, you did. You'd Sunday, like to tell Sunday us about Sunday afternoon, that. 1005 Haney Street, yeah. El Dorado, Arkansas. I was there, I know. You were there. My mama was there, my daddy was there, and Dr. Walter W. Warmoth was there. But, but after that, Every promise in the Bible was available to me. Now, however, the sad part was that here's the sad part. You want to hear the sad part of mm -hmm. this? It wasn't until I was 23 years old. That's right. So we're talking 11 years. Past. Past. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, I never received one promise from God. That's right. But and when I was 23 years old, you and I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And we began to see, we, we fell in love with the Word of God. Yep. Wow, I mean, we fell in love. And we, but I remember one night we went, I never heard a lot of these things. That's right. I remember one I remember night we that. went to a meeting and uh, a Bible teacher was there. His name was Jay Blevins. Yeah. Jay Blevins. And uh, he was talking about, all these things that God wanted to do in your life. And I'd never heard anything like that. I this. know it. I had yeah. never heard. I, I'm not saying I wasn't told. Right. I'm just saying I, was, I had never heard. heard it. Mm -hmm. So I remember we had two uh, uh, young children. Mm -hmm. And so I remember we went home. And it was right before Elizabeth was born, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so. We put them to bed. We, we put uh, uh, Jennifer and Matthew to bed. And I told you, I said, I, this can't be true. I, I've never heard anything like this, and I know that this can't be true. I'm fixing to go, because we had copied down all the scriptures and everything. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go look these up. And I did, this, this cannot be true. So you went on to bed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long it was. I went in there, and I woke you up. I woke you up. <laughs> and I said, what? Susan. It's true. Everything that he said is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Everything he said is in the Bible. And I remember you and I looked at one another and we said, well, then this is the way we're going to live from now mm -hmm. on. You know, that's what, you know, people would call an aha moment. Yes. You know, it was like all of a sudden the, you know, the focus of our life changed. It did. And we realized, wow, you know, this, you know, and we had been in church our, our, all, our life. all our lives. You know, we were... And we were faithful to be there. Yes, we, were. we weren't just the ones that went Easter and Christmas. No. We went every Sunday, right. you know. But, but you know, and the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we had heard and heard and heard, but we had never really heard. That's right. Until that event. And you know, perhaps you're watching today, and maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I need to do it. You do. You need to take a moment out of your life, and you need to. Just sit down and just get with the Lord and say, you know what? I believe this. You know, this is this is what I've been taught. This is what I've heard. And this is what I'm going to move forward with in my life. And then, you know, every day, you know, you just get something new. It's That's just right. so good. You know, I mean, you, you stop to think about it. Almost from the beginning, after we got filled with the Holy Ghost and got into the Word of God and fell in love with the Word of God, I mean, things just begin to happen. Yeah, it was I got healed of incurable disease. You got healed of an incurable disease. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Elizabeth got healed of an incurable disease. Jennifer got healed of an incurable disease. Matt did. Matt got healed of an incurable disease. And and you know you think, well, wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's it's mm -hmm. amazing uh, uh, what happens. It was just yeah. Those were some really really exciting years you know you don't like to be in a place where you need to get healing of an incurable disease no. you don't want to be there no. you know but thank the lord he heals incurable diseases yes, he you know yes, he does. it's good yes, he and does. you know what we have a free offer today yep. this book is called divine recovery and we, we can't promise that you'll get this one but if you'll text us or email us we'll send you a book 
but it might be another book. <laughs> 31 <laughs> Days of Faith. 31, we have another one that's like a devotional, so we'll see. Just let us know and we'll send you one of them. Absolutely free. Yeah, no, free. No free, charge. Free. You, Favor of God in your life. Right. You won't get, get a letter from us, this, that's that, right. and the other. We'll just, just send you the just book. Just get the book. <laughs> Okay, so so we're gonna move forward with this. We're gonna start we're gonna start talking about God's checkbook, okay? okay? All right. And then after that we're gonna kinda review just a little bit of what okay. we did on our last right. program and then we'll just get right back okay. into this. But I love this. This is from Charles Spurgeon. You know, he's a great man of God. Yes, he is. And so anyway, can I just read this? You because can. we copied this probably, right? Yes. Yeah, we, I, I, I got this from somewhere. Okay. He said this. He said, A promise of God may, may very instructively be compared to a check payable to order. You know, checks are almost obsolete now. Yeah. But to us, it's pretty relevant because yeah. we're of the age that people wrote checks. But anyway. It's given to the believer with the view of bestowing upon him some good thing. It's not meant that he should just read it comfortably and then be finished. No, he is to treat the promise as a reality, like a man treats a checkbook. Take the promise, endorse it with your name by personally receiving it as true. He is by faith to accept it as his own. Now that's, you know, if you're of the era where we wrote checks, you understand this. You understand, you know, you would write a, someone would write you a check and you had to sign your name on the back of it you to make it. You endorsed it. Yeah, you endorsed it. It was yours. You know, but if you didn't write your name on it and go deposit it. Wouldn't do you any good. It's the same way with the Word of God and His right. promises. you got to endorse them. And then you've got to make a withdrawal on that deposit. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and the thing is, God wants you and I to endorse all these promises. He does. That's, he, that's the reason he gave them. Yeah. That's the reason he gave them. That's why he did it. Let's go back and let's talk about the great promise maker. Numbers 23, 19, and 20. We'll, we'll hurry through these. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. In other words, whatever God has said, the only person that yeah. can reverse it is you. Yeah. That's so good. I love the part that he's not a man. That's right. That he would lie. Man, I like to know he tells the truth. Yes. Okay, I'm going to read this one in First Kings. Chapter 8, verse 56. Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. And listen to this. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised through his servant Moses. Not, all right. not, not one. one word. Not one word. Every, in other words, promise. everything he said came to pass just like he said. That's right. Right? That is so good. All right. There's, there's two more we want to do, maybe three more. Okay. Uh, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 10. As far as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. Mm -hmm. In other words, the word will accomplish what it is. The That's word right. is the seed. Yeah. Like, of those of you that may have gardens or whatever, if you if you want to 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 uh, have some yellow crookneck squash, mm -hmm. then what do you have to do? If You've you, got to have some yellow crookneck squash seed. So, in other words, if you want yellow crookneck squash, you can't go out there and plant a zucchini squash seed. And get the yellow. And get the yellow. It, it no, won't work it just because won't happen. the seed will produce what it is. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us that the Word of God is a seed. And see, this part where is really what you're explaining is at this end of it where it says, His Word will not return void. That's right. And then it says, But it will surely accomplish what I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Isn't that good? That is... That's amazing. That's very good. I love that scripture. All right, you want to do the one in first, second Corinthians here? Okay, and this would be chapter one, verse twenty. 
Oh, this is going to be the best one. For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. How Did many you hear of the what I just read? How many of them? All. All, all the promises, promises of God in Him are yes. And in Him, amen. And in Him, In other amen. words, they're available to us. Mm -hmm. So depending on where you read, there's somewhere between 3,500 and 9,000 promises in the Bible. Wow, that's and a lot. And all of them are for you. That's right. You can, in other words, you can you can possess any of them that you want. Yep. Right. That's good. Okay. So, and we talked last week about Mephibosheth. We don't need to go over that again. That Mephibosheth thing in the Bible is one of my favorites because yeah. Mephibosheth got to eat at the king's table. Second Corinthians, second uh, Samuel, second Samuel chapter nine. He got to eat at the king's table for the rest of his life, not because of anything he had done, but because of a covenant. A covenant that it was made between his father Jonathan and David, mm -hmm. and it's the same way you and I get to eat at God's table because of a covenant, covenant. that That's was right. made between God the Father and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. right? That so, is good. All right. So let's talk a little bit about here. Okay. All right. So uh, um, in Romans chapter four. It talks about Abraham, who, who the Bible declares is the father of our faith. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's right here just a minute. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not because you earn it. Right. It's because of faith. faith. So what can you do to earn it? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. So all right, here we are. Let's go down here now to verse 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. Now that's amazing. But was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Mm -hmm. But he said, what now? That Abraham was fully, when God told him, he said, you're going to have a son. Abraham was fully convinced that even though by outward appearance, it looked like there was no way this could happen. Yeah. No way. I know, and it's just, it's just like the, the, the author, the writer, just casually mentions since he was about 100 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Why would it be hard to have any belief for that? But he didn't. It says here he didn't waver. He didn't. He didn't waver. He 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 believed that God was able to do what he said. Yeah, that's amazing. See, that's where you and I need to come in our walk with God. That we believe that He's able to do what He said. Mm -hmm. Bring it to pass, right? Yep. There's another one right here, in First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, "How long will you falter between two opinions?" If God is, if the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, follow Him. Follow yeah, him. that's yeah. pretty simple. Whichever one you believe is. Yeah, follow. It, that's when you need to follow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's right. And you know that that's a big issue though with a lot of people is this thing of of wavering, and it's because you spend, you know, every day out in the world. You know, we live on planet Earth, mm -hmm. and we all have Fox News, and we all have, you know, just just tons of information pouring into our lives every day from all these devices that we have, That's our right. phones. Yeah. You know, people are constantly reading, yeah. and they're constantly... You know, and so it says, he says here, how long are you going to falter between two opinions? Because that's what happens. You have the opinion of the world, and then you have, thus saith God. That's right. And that's and what matters. That's what matters. But 
if your if your life is kind of out of balance and and you're not spending too much time with what saith God, you just kind of fall into that. It's it's an abyss of doubt. That's what it, it is. Oh yeah. You see, when you doubt, what you're doing is you're putting your focus on your power to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, most of the most of the time, <clears throat> we, we really know and understand that we don't. Yeah. And see, what happens is it, that just magnifies the, the problem and makes it worse. Yeah. You know, unbelief is the end result of focusing on your own power. Wow. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, see, the thing is, oh, here's what Romans 4.20 says, that Abraham grew in faith. <clears throat> That's what we all have to do. We've got grow. to grow in yeah, faith. Yeah, you've got to grow in faith. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. You know, earlier you told us about how in 1958, how you got born again. Mm -hmm. It's, I love to hear your story, honest I do. But then, you know, all these years passed, 11 years passed. You weren't growing in faith during those years. No. Why weren't you growing in faith? Because faith comes by, by hearing and, and hearing, hearing by the Word of God, and I wasn't doing and that. And he wasn't doing that. I mean, most of us, that's not what people do. No, that's right. People mostly, they, they go to, you know, Christian people, they yes. go to church on Sunday morning. That's right, yes. And then mostly, though, they spend the rest of their week working and trying to make ends meet and you know just trying to get things trying done to make, trying to make it yeah and so and so you're not growing in faith if you're not hearing and hearing so but you know today is the easiest time to be alive to hear that's right. because there's so many ways you can hear now that's right. we know you can turn it on your television and you can hear the word of god you can turn on serious radio and you can hear the word of god you can, you know, there's really no reason not to hear and hear and hear, but you got to grow in faith. Or and, and we're talking about just receiving what God said mm -hmm. and making it your own. That's what Abraham did. Yep. Let's, let's fast forward hundreds of years. Okay, hundreds, hundreds there's of a, years. a young girl, her name is Mary. That's right. She, we don't know how old she is, 13, 14, 15 years mm -hmm. old, somewhere along there. One day she's minding her own business. Mm -hmm. Just minding her own business. Yep. And this angel appears. And he says, Hail. That's highly right. Highly favored one. That's what he said. He said, uh, Don't be afraid. He said, Here's what's going to happen. Um, you're favored. You're, you're favored. He said, You're going to have a baby. It's going to be the Son of God. And she, and she said, Well, um, How can that be? How can that be? Because I've never done what you have to do to have a baby. And he said, well, here's what's going to happen. The power of God is going to overshadow you and come on you. And God's going to place a baby in your womb. Now, naturally speaking, you can, can you imagine she's thinking, yeah, but here's what, here, what was her response. Be it unto me according to your word. Mm -hmm. In other words, what you said, I believe. And we all know the rest of the story. Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. well, see, that's a, that's a really good example there of how the Word of God is really like a seed. Yes. You know, I mean, she took it and she said, okay, just, it'll, it'll be just like you said, you know, just according to the Word that you spoke. You know, I mean, how did, she was a young girl. Yeah. Highly favored. The angel said. Highly favored. Praise the Lord. Yep. And she said, be it to me according to what you said. Mm -hmm. And see, that's the way that you, that, that's the way all these thousands of promises. The, when, you, when you got born again, mm -hmm. essentially what you were saying was, be it to me <clears throat> according to what you said. See, what she did, she endorsed the check. Yes, she did. She with said, with okay. her words. Okay, that's She fine. endorsed the check. With her words. Mm -hmm. She did. How do you and I endorse the check? With our words. With our words. That's right. With our words. So, you know, I mean, you know, it, there, we have another example there right, right about that same time. The Lord appeared to a man, and his name was, uh, it was uh, uh, Mary's cousin, Elizabeth. And, the, and, the dad, and the, her Zachariah. husband's name was Zachariah. Zachariah. And the angel appeared to him, and he said, well, you're going to have a son. That's right. And he said, well, I don't know. Nah, nah. He said, I'm too old. My wife's too old. Mm -hmm. This, that, and the other. And 
I just don't believe it. I, I mean, essentially that's what essentially, he said. That's not yeah. exactly what he said, but that's essentially what he said. He said, well, I just don't believe that. And the angel said, okay, here's what's going to happen then. You are not going to be able to say another word until after this child is born. What did he did he ask for some sort of sign? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But he, you know. So so we know. But he did not endorse that check. No. But so here's the thing about it. we've got to do it, and, and 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 you and I have got to get above the doubt that we have in our life. Isn't that true? Yeah. And you know, there's always that. You know, there was one guy, and he said, "Help my unbelief." Yes, he did. You know. So. Unbelief is a very real contender for your faith. That's right. You know, and, and there's there are all these things that you that you see in the Bible. You remember the the uh, the uh, Samaritan woman? She came to Jesus and she said, "You know, help me. My daughter is grievously tormented." Mm -hmm. Remember what Jesus said? He said, "No, I, you know, I, I, you know, I can't take the children's bread." And so, but what did she say? She just wouldn't quit. That's right. She she just. She wouldn't quit. She said, and he said, you know, she said, well, yeah, but even the dogs eat from the children's table, the yeah. crumbs from the table. Yeah. And he said, woman, great is your faith. Your daughter is healed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she just wasn't going to take no for an answer. And she was a Samaritan. Yeah. And wow. so, I mean, we, you and I have got to be the same way. We've got to say, well, this is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, you you have you know that's just like that goes back to that little scripture we read a while ago about. Let me find it because I think it'd be good to bring it out again about the um, halting between two yeah, second, opinions. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure second exactly Kings, what that was. First but, Kings eighteen twenty one, and Elijah came to all the people and said, "How long will you falter between two opinions? If God, if the Lord is God, follow Him; but if Baal, follow Him." Yeah, and see this woman. She had every reason not to believe that God would do any, Jesus would do anything for her because she wasn't the right, you know. That's right. She just wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so, but yet, she stood there and she said, she just kept on. She kept, she wouldn't quit. She would not quit. I like Malachi 3, 6. He says this. He said, for I am the Lord, I do not change. That's good. You know, um. Uh, for Isaiah 48, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of God stands for ever. Word of God stands what? For forever. Ever. Won't you do that right there in Psalm 50, verse 21? Oh, I'm not, I would, but I don't All know right. where you are. Okay, these things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you. In other words, see, we think that God says stuff, but he doesn't really mean it. Because mm -hmm. we do that, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We say things that we don't really mean. Well, he's not that way. God is not that way. If he says it, he means it. Mm -hmm. Well, I like these these verses here that you've got where it says, "I will," you know, just just try just making sure about your faith, you know, and just just saying things, you know, like that you read from the Bible, you know, when you're standing in the place of prayer and and you're in in great need, mm -hmm. like. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, He will deliver us. Yeah. He will. He will. That's what it says in Psalm 91. Yeah. Yeah, in Psalm 91, it, and it, at the very end of it, it talks about just trusting God. And it says, you know, if you just trust Him, and what is that? Believe. Believe Him. Believe yeah. Him. Mm -hmm. You know, that He's going to make everything right for you. That's right. That's what it is. It's all about believing. It's all, it's, that, that's, see, that's the key right there. It is all about believing. But in order to do that, in order to do that, you've got to renew your mind. Yeah, that's important. You have to change the way you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and be dogmatic about it. <laughs> like the woman that Jesus called. He was actually calling her he, a dog. He did call her a dog. Yeah, he did. That was not. But she said, yeah, but Lord, even the dogs get the crumbs. Yep. So, you know, uh, th there's just so many things here um, that, that God loves us. Mm -hmm. You stop and think about this. Those of you that have children or, or grandchildren, is there anything you wouldn't do for them? No. Uh, I mean, you know, no, they may do things that make you mad, upset you, et cetera, et cetera, but you still love them. Mm -hmm. Well, God is no different. You and I do things that 
that he's not really happy with. Mm -hmm. But he still loves us, and there's nothing he wouldn't do for us. That's right. You can count on him. That's right. He never changes. You know, he never changes. There's, there's a, if you remember in Acts chapter 1, mm -hmm. Jesus is there with his disciples. And the Bible says that he is ascending up to heaven. Okay? Mm -hmm. And there's this angel said there. And, it, he, and here's what the angel says. This same Jesus yeah. will return in like manner. Now, mm -hmm. when he said this same Jesus, all the things that Jesus did while he was here, right. all the miracles that he did, all the healings that he did, all the, the needs that he met, well, if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and this same Jesus is returning, mm -hmm. well, then he's still doing what he did while he was here. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, remember Ronnie Trice used to say, Jesus is who he was, and he and does, he what, does he what he did. Yeah, he's he's yeah, never changed. He never changes. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, <clears throat> all the promises, 3,500, 9,000, whatever. You know, it, 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 most of us will never appropriate the 3,500, right. much less than 9,000, but they are all available to us. Mm -hmm. what is, what's available to us? Well, healing is available to us. Prosperity is available to us. Uh, um, uh, good family relationships is available to us. All these things are, are available to mm -hmm. us as believers because of what God has done for us in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. That's right. He loves us mm -hmm. with an everlasting love. Thank and God. I, 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 amen to that. Praise mm -hmm. God. Well, Susan, I want to thank you for allowing us, us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, Contact us here at the bottom line. We would love to pray for you. We believe God answers prayer. We want to thank you for your continued financial support. We appreciate it so very much. Remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you should know the truth, and the truth, truth will set, set you, you free. free.